You know, looking back at our glorious history, there are still few things that still leaves us traumatized. We can talk about that night in Istanbul. We can talk about that Solimontari goal that passed the line against Juventus. We can talk about Mattia De Cilio being labeled as the new Paolo Maldini. But trust me, this one takes it to a whole new level. These days, when Milan play against Genoa, it just feels like two Serie A teams battling for three points. It doesn't feel like that these days, but once upon a time, and not too long ago, there was this weird love affair between Milan and Genoa. From summer 2008, and for the next decade, Milan and Genoa exchanged players like a pack of baseball cards between each other. And I'm not talking about just one or two players, I'm talking about quite a few. Well, way too many. There was no figure on this, so I tried to manually count them. And trust me, it was a hard count because some players kept moving back and forth in the same season. And this is the figure I came up with. Yep, you're reading that right. 32 deals between Milan and Genoa. I even saw a couple of cases of a player being sold, signed back to the initial club and loaned to the other club all within the same season. Normally, a relationship like that is mutually beneficial between the two clubs. But the question is, how did Milan benefit from this bizarre love story between themselves and Genoa? Today, we're gonna take a look at the legacy of that bizarre relationship between Milan and Genoa. Right, so, let's go all the way back to the 2007-08 season. To put things into perspective, we still had the Brazilian Ronaldo, Carlo Ancelotti was still in charge, and Milan were the champions of Europe. It was a different time for the club, but since then, countless players have either arrived or returned to Milan from or to Genoa. In the season after, Marco Borriello rejoined Milan after an exceptional year at Genoa. He would go on to be our main striker in front of Ronaldinho and Pato for the 2009-10 season. The next season saw Milan and Genoa continue this trend with Milan signing three Genoa players in Socrates Papastopoulos, Kevin Prince Boateng, and Marco Amelia. Obviously Boateng was a success and was an integral part of a squad in a season that Milan won the league title. Whereas Marco Amelia was a World Cup winner and you can make a solid argument for him as a reliable backup. Stefan El Sharawi was signed in the next season, who did fairly well, especially in that one season where he carried us in the attacking phase. So far so good, right? But this is where things get interesting. This is when we signed Kevin Constant, Walter Birsa, Luca Antonelli and Andrea Bertolacci. Yep, I don't think you can make an argument for any of them winning the Ballon d'Or anytime soon. It's important to know that this wasn't exactly a one-way relationship, as Milan sold Acerbi to Genoa as a part of the Kevin Constance deal. Likewise, Mbayan Young and Suso spent time on loan at Genoa before coming back to Milan. In 2015, we signed Kuchka for 2.5 million, and honestly, I'd say he was the only Genoa signing that bore some fruits alongside Boateng and El Shirawi. Both Niang and Suzo revitalized their careers for a brief period with the loan spells at Genoa and came back to Milan as better players. Looking back, I think this relationship was born out of hard times for both clubs, especially Milan, which led to 32 deals between them. Many of them being young players that barely had any senior games in a professional league, let alone for Milan or Genoa. And obviously, many of them were not even for footballing reasons, but just to cook the financial books. Honestly, even after all these years, I still don't know what to make out of this bizarre relationship. I'm just glad that it's been buried deep under the ground alongside our banter era. Oh, well, I guess old habits die hard. I'm Football Drone, and I'll be making similar content for Sempre Milan. Keep an eye on the Sempre Milan channel because the guys are up to some amazing stuff. I also do this kind of content on my own channel as well. If you like this one, feel free to visit my channel in the description. Thanks for watching and Forza Milan!